Hey yeah, hope your day is going great. In this video you will create a basic REST API and learn about concepts such as view sets, routers and serializers, how they work and why they are used. Let's get started. pip install Django REST framework. Now let's go ahead and run our server. In the settings for pi we now also want to include it under REST underscore framework. Now let's create a separate API folder in our snippets app just to hold all of the files which are related to our API in there. So let's right click and new folder, API. And then the first file we are going to create is called serializers.py. A serializer is a class which can be used to for example convert a model instance to a native Python data type. So first of all from rest framework import serializers and from snippets.models import snippet that's just this very basic model we have let's now create the class called snippet serializer we subclass it from serializers.model serializer and this is actually pretty similar to what we can do with forms or model forms in this case it's just a layer of abstraction which enables us to directly serialize a model because that's a quite common task. And now let's specify the class meta and set the model equal to the snippet. And then the fields we want to serialize will be title, the body and the created as well. And there's a serializer which is called hyperlinked model serializer, which may be better if you are working with relationships, but again, we're going to take a look at that later on. And now that we can convert to a native Python data type, we also of course want to be able to somehow have a view which we can use the snippet serializer with. So let's go ahead and create the file called viewsets.py. And I think that it's easiest to understand viewsets as soon as we start using them. So let's just create a very basic version from snippets.models import snippet then we also want to import the serializer we just created from dot serializers import snippet serializer now from rest framework import the view sets we can define a new view set called snippet view set that subclasses from view sets dot model view set again another layer of abstraction for specifically a view set which relates to a model then we can set the query set as snippet.objects.all and the serializer class as snippet serializer. Again, as soon as we have the basic REST API set, we'll get back to this file and then explain it in more detail. Let's now go to the main folder and create a new file called router.py. Again, all of the conventions I am using for where to include what, it's just my preference as of creating this tutorial. And in here we want to import basically all of the view sets we have in our project. And in this case it's just one. From snippets.api.viewsets import snippet view set and then from rest framework import routers. And now let's create a new router and set it to routers.default router. Then we can call router.register snippets, which will be the common prefix for all of the views. And then we also need to pass the snippet view set. And now we need to wire up this router with our urls.py file. So from .router, import the router. And now let's create a path to API, where we include the router.urls. If we now visit localhost 8000 slash API, you will see this new API view. And if we now visit the snippets, we see the one snippet we have. And if we visit snippets slash one, we only get a snippet instance. So what is happening here? A view set is just a class which specifies a variety of views which we want to use in our API. When dealing with a single view, we have functions for representing the different request methods. For example, we have the get function to handle the case that somebody sends a get request. But in the case of view sets, we actually have the method called list, create, retrieve, update, then there's also partial update, and destroy. 
There might be more, I don't know. But these are the most important ones. So basically what you need to remember is that this view set just groups a set of views, which we need in our API for listing all of the models we have, for creating a new model, for retrieving one single instance, and of course updating one, and then destroying a partial update. And to understand how this works a bit more, let's create a class called snippet view set, which now subclasses from view sets dot view set. So we have to implement the functionality on our own. And let's go ahead and comment this out. So as I said, instead of now using get and post, for example, we can just use list, which takes in self and request. And in here we of course have to return all of the, or we should return all of the instances we have in our database, or just a portion of them, however we want to. So let's set the query set equal to snippet.objects.all. And then the serializer will be equal to snippet serializer, which we pass the query set to. Because serializers also are able to serialize a query set instead of just one instance. But in this case, we have to pass the many equals true option. And now that this is set, we can return a response with the serializer.data, which is an attribute on the serializer now. And the response is actually a custom one from the REST framework. So from REST framework dot response import response. And you can see that we get an error where we need the base name argument to be specified. So go to our router and then specify base name as snippet. Again, we're going to take a look at what this does in a minute when we get to this file. And you can see that we now get a simple list as well, just as we did before. But if we try to visit a detailed URL, you will see that we don't get anything because of course we haven't handled the case yet. We only have the list case. And next up, we want to dig deeper into this router. So what is happening here? Basically, the router now has an argument called URLs. So let's just loop over it and see what is happening. For URL in router.urls, we want to print the URL and then a new line just for some visual separation. And you see a variety of URL patterns displayed. The first one is for a snippet list. And then we also have the snippet detail. And then we have the API root and another one. So why do we have two and what are they? Basically, the first portion of this name is signaled by our base name, which we specified. So if we change this to dragon and refreshed again, you would now see dragon dash list. So the router uses the base name argument to figure out the name of the URL. So seeing this, we can guess that the router basically is passed a view set and then uses this view set to generate a list of URL patterns, which we can then use. And in this case, we just access them via the dot URLs and include them in our, you know, in our URLs supply, in our main URLs config. And the reason why we have two paths here is because this one takes in another argument, which is called format. So if we go in here and type in question mark format and set it to, for example, JSON, then we get basically the same just in this JSON format without anything, you know, fancy to look at. And using just these two URLs, we can basically do all of the operations such as create, read, update, and delete, which are the main four. Let's just go ahead and comment this out because we don't need it anymore. So yeah, we now have a basic REST API up and running. You can see that by default, this view looks quite amazing because you can do some quite common operations with it. For example, have a title and then a body, I don't know, test, whatever. And then we now posted this new snippet. And wrapping up, I want to show you how you can add your own path to this view set. Let's say we wanted to have a path to display the newest of the snippets. So dev newest self and request, and we are going to set the newest equal to self dot get query set, which is a method on the model view set. And then we can call dot order by and order by the created and then select the last element. So that should be the newest one. And then we can also use the serializer manually as we did up here by setting a serializer equal to self dot get serializer class. And then again, to opening and closing brackets. Looks kind of weird, but it's correct. And then passing the newest. And because we only have one snippet, we don't need to pass this many equals true argument. And now we can return a response with the serializer.data. 
And to mark this as an actual route we can hit, we have to use the action decorator and set the methods equal to get. And now we need to specify whether we want to call this on a detail view or not. In this case, we don't. So let's set detail equal to false. Because why would we get the newest item under a detail view wouldn't make any sense because we only have one there. And let's now quickly import the action decorator from rest framework dot decorators import action. And if we go ahead and now visit snippets and newest, you see that we get the newest snippet. Awesome. There are also ways to customize this name so it doesn't need to be the function name or to add permissions and so on, but I'm going to cover that later on. But of course our API isn't secure in any way, so we are going to be adding token authentication in the next part. There are other types of authentication as well, we're going to talk about them too. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. See you in the next part and cheers!